Hi, my name is Carmen Ochoa and welcome to my podcast, The 411 with Media Law. This is my first ever podcast and I'm so excited to have everyone listen in. Today we are going to talk about a legal issue related to the First Amendment. This is an assignment that was given to us in our Media Law class and it was our choice to pick what topic we wanted to cover and the topic I chose was libel. Oops, I better watch what I say. Kinda kidding and kinda being serious at the same time. <laughs> For those not familiar with the term libel, traditionally it refers to claims based on written defamatory statements, not to be confused with slander, which are claims based on spoken defamatory statements. Some keywords I mentioned are libel, of course, slander, and defamation. All of these kind of blur under one legal umbrella if you are bringing a libel claim to court. And a libel claim is basically a state law claim, so it varies from state to state. Each state has their own libel laws in place. Um, it's typically something that's not covered under like a federal court system, um, but it is something that belongs to the states. One thing you fellow listeners may be asking is how does libel relate to the First Amendment? Well, under the First Amendment, it states Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. When the First Amendment was written, the main goal was to prevent the government from restricting speech, forcing speech, imposing criminal sanctions for speech. However, The First Amendment protection is sometimes extended to allegedly libelous statements. Why is that? Well, number one, free speech is in conflict with a person's claim to a good reputation. I mean, no one wants to be considered the bad guy or a terrible person. And in order to protect a person's reputation, it would be necessary to restrict anyone from talking bad about or posting something bad about the person. Even though libel is a state claim, the Supreme Court has established some constitutional protection for some kinds of speech. Every state has its own way of interpreting the law, as I said before. So if you happen to be in a libel case right now, lol, which I'm hoping no one is, (laughs) totally awkward if you are, but that's okay, all of these elements must be decided in the favor of the plaintiff. So the plaintiff is the person who brought up the case. Um, means they can't win unless they have proven what I'm about to tell you right now. So the first one is, is the statement defamatory? The second one, is the statement false? The third one is, is the statement a factual assertion as opposed to like an opinion or a joke? Uh, The next one is, is the statement a valid plaintiff? Like someone who was identifiable. Number five, was the statement published? Number six is the defendant acted with requisite level of fault. Number seven, the plaintiff suffered damages. And I think that's one thing that's important in all of this is, um, was it intentional? Did they intend to defame this person? Or was it negligent? Um, Was it unintended to defame this person? Um, Some examples we can look at under libel um, cases. One would be uh, Gertz versus Robert Welch, Inc., and that happened in 1974. So an issue um, in this case is that for nearly a decade, a magazine called American Opinion had been warning people of a national conspiracy to discredit local law enforcement agencies and create a um, national police force capable of supporting a communist dictatorship. And so during this time, it's where communism was considered such a bad thing and anybody affiliated or associated with communism was automatically seen as the enemy. And so consistent with the message that they are trying to send out, the magazine published an article on the murder of the Nuccio trial, which was titled Frame Up Richard Nuccio and the War on Police. It alleged that the testimony at Nuccio's trial was false and that his prosecution was part of a communist campaign against the police. Gertz was portrayed as an architect of the frame-up. This magazine made numerous false allegations about Gertz and even published a photograph of him. 
And so Gertz is the repu reputable attorney representing the Nelson family. And so he's not really popular or well-known. He's just a normal person living his life in the world as an attorney. And so the findings were um, in this Gertz versus Robert Welch in case, the court found that there is a compelling normative consideration underlying the distinction between public and private defamination plaintiffs. So the court decided there should be some middle ground for private figures. It held that states may impose strict liability. So what that means is that this magazine went out of their way to harm a person's reputation. And many of their statements that were being published were false. And this plaintiff suffered many damages, and so it was intentional to defame this person. And so the significance of this case was the result that many states have applied is a negligence standard, holding publishers liable if they fail to act with reasonable care. And so this is important to private citizens such as ourselves, such as our listeners here. Um, I don't think any celebrities are listening to this podcast since it's <laughs> not pretty popular. But it is important to know what people's rights are and what is protected under the First Amendment. And so in conclusion, libel cases can be extremely time consuming and also very difficult to prove as well as extremely expensive. And so if people are in a libel case, I would watch what someone has to say about someone or and if somebody is in mass communication or in media law, that's something that people need to really watch out for. As citizens of the United States, we are guaranteed the right to freedom of speech. However, under that free speech, we are protected by free speech, however, we're not protected under freedom of consequence, if that makes sense. And I know most of my fellow listeners are here thinking, like, oh my god, like, libel is so serious, like, I could say the wrong thing and I can get in trouble. But as I said before, it is expensive and it is a time-consuming process. It just depends on the situation and the circumstances and what state you're in, um, in order for these libel laws um, to affect you. And I hope everyone here had a nice time listening to what I had to say. And I hope you guys have a very blessed day. And thank you for listening to Carmen Ochoa, that's me, here in today's podcast with the 411 with Media Law. Thank you. Bye.